what's going on uh so uh figured i'd just run a quick video because um uh, here recently i've been watching a bunch of the squatch and cowboys videos um i'll go ahead and post this video uh just a quick one here and this is for you cowboy um watching a few of your videos and you start going up them mountains and uh you know the breathing starts to get a little heavy i uh i can relate brother uh, we ain't getting any younger <laughs> so um i figured hey you know what let me turn this guy on to this all right this is going to help you out immensely okay it's uh o2 hold on where is it right there all right show you how this operates got a little trigger uh it's weightless put it in your pack few shots of that do your own research on how you should use it consult your physician don't take medical advice from me i'm not a doctor <laughs> but i will tell you you'll uh, feel like you're about 20 years old it helps out immensely uh your muscles won't burn so bad you just be like wow i actually got up that hill pretty uh pretty easily now it ain't like it last uh three four hours or so so you know if you're going to do a lot of hiking up a mountain or something, you want to bring a little O2. Uh, Nikki Cologne, hey, you went up on that mountain and you were uh, having elevation sickness. <whistles> Grab some O2. I think I told you on a show once. So here it is. Young pups, hey, you want to run faster? Keep oxygen in your blood. I am not a tracker. I am learning to track. I am not a Sasquatch Bigfoot expert. I am learning to recognize how Sasquatch Bigfoot may be affecting the forest materials within the environments I study. I have a hard time finding the words to explain my thinking when put on the spot. But I'm reading to strengthen my vocabulary and learning reasons why I am having such a difficult time conveying my thoughts. All my work has little to no positive impact if I cannot Here's properly share right it with there. others. Kind of on a trot, a little like a gallop. It's a pretty good sized track. I'm gonna put a measurement to him here in a second. I just wanted to get the trackway here. Uh, you know, center to center in that gallop right there is about three feet going uphill. Two, three, four, five. A lot of heel. I'll put some measurements to them. One, two, 
two, three, four, five. this up and I set a light up, up here to see if I can scan with the light. Let's see if we can get a 3D scan while this light's still on. Got Fisher or Martin, either or. I mean, if this is a Martin, this thing is humongous. Martins are usually two, three pounds, or like a pound and a half, two pounds, kind of about the size of a mink. So I set up my light up there on the trackway. I've been checking things out. And I'm going to read a little out of uh, <clears throat> James Bruchuk and James C. Halfpenny's book series, Scats and Tracks of the Northeast. This is one of four of that series. They're coming out with a new series. All right. So, what do you think it is? That looks like a little baby track, about five, six inches long. That's about four and a half, five inches long. I mean, it is abnormal, the heel down. But let me show you what I'm 
like what I'm checking out here. We'll get some brief descriptions. All right. So, let me get my light. Oh, hold on. Sorry about that. I didn't see any uh, webbing. Canadian links. So I'm going to move past that. Mountain lion. Um, I don't think we have a mountain lion here. Black bear. Don't believe we have a black bear here. I just I can't see a baby cub bear running around out here right now. So it's not a weasel. Where are we? Okay, here we go. Here's what I think it may be, but the track is humongous for this. All right. Oh, Lord. All right, so we have a Martin, uh, which I call Pine Martin. The size of a small house cat, but slender. One to two pounds, 20% larger than female, or the males are 20% larger than a female, so they have sexual dimorphism. And a pointed flat skull with small ears, overall color golden brown with a orange to yellowish chest patch. Edges of the ears are white, hairy, slender tail. Track, five toes in a one three one group and little toe on the inside of the foot. Sometimes does not register. Interdigital pad is a chevron. The proximal pad may show in the foot front footprint. Heel often shows. This is where I think why I think this is a Martin. Right here with the heel. <clears throat> Feet are well furred in the winter, making tracks indistinct. The trail gallop stride averages 22 inches. What do we have? We got 25 or 26, and we have an extra large track. <clears throat> Which is way cool. Would I ever love to get a picture of that? mostly gallops in a variety of two by two three by three and four by four patterns will be found now what we're seeing is we're seeing two groups almost tight one 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 two one all right well it's not a mate it's not an otter because otters drag their tails then the next culprit would be a fisher. Larger than a domestic cat, but slender. Seven and a half to 12 pounds. The males are larger than the females. Got a pointed flat skull with small ears and the color is dark brown with a long bushy tail. Not really bushy though. The track has five toes in a one three one grouping. Little toe on the inside of the foot sometimes does not register. Interdigital pad chevron shaped. Proximal pad may show in the front footprint. Heel seldom shows. Claws short. Feet are not well furred, which in the winter makes toes appear clearly in the tracks. We have that. The gallop stride averages 28 inches. Mostly gallops, but walking in a 3-3, three, 1-2-1, three, one, one, and a 4-by-4 four four gallop pattern are also common. We got the 1-2-1. One, one. That's what we have here is a 1-2-1. One, one. Heel seldom shows, but we're seeing a heel. Seldom shows. This is our track pattern right up here. One, two, one. A lope. I think we have a fisher. I think we have a fisher. All right. So. So from the uh, back. To the front. 
we're looking at about 24 inches maybe yeah i'd say because i gotta pull that tight so about 24 inches with a one two one <sighs> here it's about just a little less two and three quarters uh, here this one here three wide by five long and I've used the thermal up through the woods up there when I first found these and I followed them down into there and then it went down by the creek and then turned and went back up to the top of the hill so I'll probably cross them again up in there who knows maybe I'll get a maybe I'll get a look at it but um I'm going up there to set that trail camera so I got to get that done and get out of here before this bad weather starts Well, just found another one. <laughs> There's it. Right there, there. I don't know. How do you make a damn boot out of that? Right? See the, like the question mark? I mean, it's see the hook? Picture that. I don't know. I don't even know how my boot would melt out like that. See how my boot comes to a point? That's a square across the top. Straight down the sides. That was what it was going on in those other tracks. I cannot stop thinking about that last track I discovered on my way out of there last Saturday night. I believe I made a very poor choice. My reasoning was that well, I was exhausted, falling to sleep, walking out with five new plaster casts my camera on a tripod and a bag in one hand and a bag with supplies and debris in the other. And I was clothed in heavy winter gear. I discovered a suspicious set of winter tracks the Friday preceding this endeavor. Well, I took a knee and made a plan, assembled supplies and equipment, and trekked back up into where I had found the trackway Friday night. I prepared executed and documented the five castings and well to my surprise I then discovered a single hair one would see this as a successful executed plan and for all intents and purposes it was just that but I got very frustrated the last time I visited a particular set of sticks along that trail that in my opinion were associated with my Friday night trek up into this area. Suffering from sleep deprivation, seriously considering laying down and sleeping in the snow, I began to video and document the stick findings and while I become angry, frustrated with the preconceived notion that certainly someone was hoaxing me. 
and I may have been wasting my valuable time. But nevertheless, I completed the video, of which no one should listen to. And by that, I mean I was pissed off, and I ruined my documentation of what it could have been a very important sequence of events assisting in my tree breaks decoded investigation process. Deciding uh, not to lay down and close my eyes, I continued walking the trail back to my truck, now approximately about an eighth of a mile, and went only half that distance, just north of the last beaver dam. I discovered another impression in the snow that was better than any of the five that I had casted hours prior. When I looked at it, I sighed, and I was still frustrated, thinking, I'm being duped. I took photo and video of this new impression, but because of my demeanor, or should I say my state of mind, I never even tried to render a 3D image of the track. I had more plaster in the bottom of my pack, and never even took the time to think it through and cast this rare find. I'm disgusted with myself, and I wish I could I turn know. back time. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a good I reminder that I digress. training your mind to take a knee I just and think know. things through before making a decision is absolutely you know, I'm imperative. I'm tired. I just want to lay down on the ground and go sleep. <laughs>